The Voyagers, everyone's favorite space probes, are making news once more. It seems that we had nearly severed our communication with Voyager 1 recently. According to a NASA report, the flight data system of Voyager 1, which is made up of three onboard computers, began transmitting binary gibberish data back to Earth on December 12, 2023. The data consisted of a repeating sequence of ones and zeros that the engineers could not understand. Engineers could still send signals to the far-off probe at the time of the incident, indicating that it was still functioning, but something was obviously wrong. NASA attempted to restart the system as soon as possible, but it was unsuccessful, and the probe continued to send absurd signals. However, after months of trying every trick in the book, NASA experts eventually devised a solution. Hello, and welcome to ZE. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon, and put your ideas and suggestions on the comments section. You'll see how amazing the engineering team's ability to find a solution for the fault was when you examine the Voyager 1 probe in more detail. We'll get to that in a moment. To begin with, it's incredible that the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft have been orbiting for almost 47 years. In addition to trying to extract as much information as possible about interstellar space from the probes, NASA has been exerting every effort to keep them operational in the hopes that they will continue to function when the spacecraft celebrate their 50th anniversary. The two spacecraft that are still in operation, Voyager 2 and Voyager 1, were launched on August 20, 1977, and September 5, 1977, respectively. One of the most amazing features of the Voyager probes is the fact that they were only intended to endure four years. When Voyager 1's communications problem first surfaced, NASA engineers believed it might be the end of their connections with the spacecraft. We certainly don't want to lose communication with the probe after all it's accomplished and been through, an engineer said. To put it mildly, Voyager 1 is a scientific legend due to the incredible achievements it has accomplished. It is an extremely significant spacecraft. It was found that Io, one of Jupiter's moons, was a supervolcanic world rather than merely a lifeless rock. For NASA scientists, this color-processed image of a lunar volcano exploding into space was a tremendous surprise and blew everyone's minds. Everyone was astounded by the stunning picture of Saturn that Voyager 1 captured. The probe found that Titan, Saturn's largest moon, may potentially have liquid water on its surface in addition to the amazing photographs. These are only a few of the findings made by the probe. What then became of Voyager 1, and why did it cease to function as a regular spacecraft? It transpires that a crucial mechanism had malfunctioned. The flight data system of Voyager 1 is a crucial part that allows the spacecraft to operate independently throughout its deep space voyage. The probe is currently an astounding 15.5 billion miles from Earth, so it is an incredible accomplishment that we are able to interact with it. However, there's an incredible explanation for this that very few people are aware of, which we will discuss with you in a moment. Now, let's return to the glitch. Voyager 1's flight data system is composed of multiple parts that cooperate to control the spacecraft's functions. This comprises the command interface, telemetry systems, storage devices, and central computer data store. The command and data subsystem, CDS, the main computer of Voyager 1, is responsible for processing commands transmitted from Earth and overseeing the spacecraft's operations. In the event that you are unfamiliar with the Voyager's computers, you should know this. By today's standards, Voyager 1's computer system is extremely outdated. The processing speed of the command and data subsystem is merely 88 kilohertz, or about 8,000 instructions or cycles per second, and it only contains 68 kilobytes of memory. To put it into perspective, consider that the majority of smartphones nowadays have 32 gigabytes of memory, and a modern central processor unit with a clock speed of 3 GHz completes 3 billion cycles per second. Alternatively, the disparity in storage can be likened to the gap between a cup holding 68 droplets of water and 32 Olympic-sized swimming pools of water. 
The spacecraft's flight data system, a crucial part of its overall architecture that is in charge of organizing and analyzing data gathered during the mission, experienced a fault. Collecting, processing, and returning scientific data from Voyager 1's instruments and experiments to Earth is the main goal of the flight data system. It may be thought of as the spacecraft's core nervous system, coordinating all of its different subsystems and making sure everything runs smoothly the entire way. After months of investigation, NASA engineers found that approximately 3% of the flight data system's memory had been damaged. The malfunction might have been brought on by charged particles in deep space, or it might have just aged. Mission engineers, of course, were unable to fix the chip, so they managed to extract the malformed code from the failing chip and stow it away in random locations within the FDS's memory. With 30 billion miles to travel from Earth to the spacecraft and back, the first patch was sent to the Voyager 1 probe on April 18. After waiting almost two full days for a response from the probe, the NASA team was greatly relieved to learn on April 20, 2024, that the modification had been successful. In the upcoming weeks, engineers will have to redo the remaining lost code for the flight data system. These will include instructions to bring back the capability of the probe to transmit more significant scientific data home. The probes have failed many times before, much more than this one. Voyagers 1 and 2 have had a difficult time during their lengthy years in the hostile environment of space. After Voyager 2 lost contact with Earth in August 2023, engineers believe that would be the last time they would hear from the spacecraft. However, contact was restored a few days later. Some of the probe systems have had to be shut off by NASA engineers due to the length of time the two spacecraft have been operational. Of the 10 instruments, four are still active on Voyager 1, and five are still operating on Voyager 2. NASA engineers have turned off heaters and other functions on the probes to conserve energy for the high-gain antenna, which serves as the primary point of contact between the probe and Earth. The low-field magnetometer and magnetometers which measure the magnetic fields of the outer planets and the sun, are the other instruments that are still in use. One of the instrument's most important discoveries occurred in 2015 when it was shown that solar winds have the ability to reroute the magnetic fields of charged particles they come into contact with. Even beyond the heliopause, the outer edge of the heliosphere that functions as the surface of the bubble that envelopes our solar system. On both probes, the low-energy charged particle instruments remain operational. This device was essential in assisting scientists in locating the heliopause in 1993 following a strong outburst of solar activity from the sun. Both craft still have functioning hydrazine thrusters, which both propel and heat the craft. The sensors at the back of the spacecraft are shielded from dust and other small particles by a micrometeorite shield on both space probes. The other significant equipment that remains operational are the optical calibration target instruments, which are responsible for calibrating the charged particle instrumentation on each of the probes. Throughout their lengthy journeys into deep space, both Voyagers have had their equipment constantly pointed at the target plate for calibration. To save power, several of the probe's other instruments have been turned off for decades. In addition to the instruments, the probes use radioisotope thermoelectric generators. These generators employ plutonium-238 to power the craft and maintain their temperature, allowing the probes to extend their missions for a considerable amount of time. However, they are beginning to deteriorate rapidly, and eventually, they will cease to function completely, bringing the Voyager missions to an end. That day might not be far off. Even though the probes will eventually stop transmitting data, they remain valuable to us. Remember that both spacecraft are sending a message from Earth to any other advanced civilizations that may exist, and that some of them may be able to detect these spacecraft. Phonograph recordings, known as the Voyager Golden Records, were installed in both Voyager spacecraft. The purpose of these records was to give any extraterrestrial intelligence that might come across the probes in the far future a glimpse of Earth and its people. The recordings feature a variety of natural sounds from Earth, including the sound of thunder, birdsong, and ocean waves. 
They also include musical selections from many civilizations across the globe, as well as greetings in 55 different languages. A few of the musical selections are Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2, and, quite surprisingly, Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. Additionally, the records include 116 analog encoded images that show many facets of life on Earth, such as scientific diagrams, animals, landscapes, and human anatomy. It's worth noting that a committee led by the renowned astronomer, cosmologist, and scientific communicator Carl Sagan selected the content. The gold-plated copper recordings are built to last billions of years in space, despite the harsh conditions of space travel. Each record has an aluminum cover with playback instructions engraved on the outside. These instructions include how to assemble a stylus and cartridge to play the records, as well as a diagram showing how the sun is positioned in relation to 14 pulsars, which can be used to pinpoint the spacecraft's origin and time. Yes, we have provided directions to our planet in case there are hostile aliens in the universe. The fact that the Golden Records are primarily meant to send a message of kindness from humanity to any extraterrestrials who might intercept the Voyager probes might not bother them. Let's just hope that doesn't occur very soon. Now, keep in mind that we have incredible news to share with you. It has to do with the astounding fact that, despite their distance of more than 15 billion miles, we can still communicate with the probes. At around 38,000 miles per hour, Voyager 1 is departing from Earth, while Voyager 2 is traveling at approximately 35,000 miles per hour. However, here's an intriguing fact that you most likely were unaware of. The Earth orbits the Sun in such a way that it moves closer to both spacecraft at certain times of the year. Yes, Earth swings towards the spacecraft at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour while in orbit. As a result, their temporary distances from Earth are decreasing. It's us and the Earth that change, not them and their outward motion. The goal of the two Voyager probes is still to explore interstellar space and return useful scientific data to Earth. They continue to be the most distant man-made objects from Earth, existing in the interstellar medium outside the solar wind sphere of effect. They are a true monument to the inventiveness of the human spirit. Thank you for watching.